Get ready for the Splash Live! Greater West Bloomfield's dedicated update show. Events, businesses, and people. Anything and anyone causing a ripple in the community. And now, let's dive in to the Splash Live! Well, good morning and welcome to the Splash Live. Dave Scott in my own studio today. Now, the, my producer, Calvin is uh, is doing a great job in our West Bloomfield studios. My other producer, Jared, is not here. So I'm kind of zooming into the show for my studio today. So it's a little bit different, but, you know, we, we do whatever we need to do to make all this work. And thank you to our amazing technical team. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Splash Live. We've got a great show today. Um, but first of all, before we get to all that, thank you very much for joining us and welcome to the Splash. Splash is part of 90 Minutes of live television each and every day. We start with this show, very local, and wherever we happen to be every day. And then Tyler will check in in his studio today at 10 o'clock for the Megacast. It's a half an hour of live local television, an hour and a half of live local television every day, half an hour of the Splash, an hour of the Megacast. And easy to watch and listen to across all of our platforms. You can watch the Splash and the Megacast on Comcast Channel 15 if you're in the greater West Bloomfield area, AT&T Channel 99 if you're an AT&T subscriber. That's the community channel for AT&T. And if you go there, you'll find all the community television television channels, including ours, who just select Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, West Bloomfield, or Orchard Lake, and you'll be able to find our programming. More and more people are going to our website, and that is civiccentertv.com. Actually, that's my favorite place to watch, because all the video is available in full excuse me, in full high definition. And then it's also very easy for you to watch all of our archives and check out all the other additional information that we have for you on Civic Center TV. So we encourage you to go there. A lot of people watching every day on social media. Thank you very much for tuning in on Facebook and on YouTube, if that's where you happen to be today. And of course, thank you to our radio audience tuning in on 89.3 Lakes FM. The big 89, as I like to call it. Nice wave here and start watching the show and then you got to get in your car, you can tune in on the radio. So that's what's going on. Check out these new shades, man. These are not shades, but my new glasses. Um, kind of going for a different look here. Hopefully you like that. Sunshine today in the greater West Bloomfield area. And it's going to be a little bit cool. It's going to warm up as a week goes on. But we expect sunny skies today with a high around 48 degrees. Some precip tomorrow morning, 46 will be our high. It's going to get up all the way to 60. How about that on Friday and then expect a sunny weekend temperatures only in the 50s over the weekend, but really that's not bad at all. Pretty good weather. Um, all things considered, we're really shifting into uh, more of a springtime pattern as we get to the end of March and get ready for Tiger opening day, which is April 5th, not too far away. So I like to mention uh, what national day it is every day. Try to get to it every day. We miss it occasionally. But <laughs> today is National Weed Appreciation Day. Yes, those kind of weeds, not the kind of weed you were thinking about. I, I know here in Michigan, we, we could probably have an appreciation day for the other kind of weed for some people. But today is National Appreciation Day for weeds. And we think of weeds really as these ugly things that mess up our yard. But take a look at that beautiful image of some of the, the really gorgeous um, quote unquote weeds that we have. We could talk to the naturalists over the Parks and Rec Department to get more information about what really constitutes a weed. But uh, it is National Weed Day, Weed Appreciation Day. Really good news from Oakland County this morning. Big event going on today from 8.30, so now until 11.30. And this is from the Oakland County Health Department. They invite you to stop by Missionary Baptist Church in Pontiac. You can get on the internet and find them. Today until 11.30, 
vaccinations. You can get your flu vaccination if you've not gotten it. You can get your COVID vaccination if you've not gotten the the, the most recent update. And here's a really good information. Um, no one is going to be charged anything. So again, you can see the information on your screen today, the 28th of March until 1130 a.m. All you got to do is head over to the Missionary Baptist Church. You can see the address right on your screen. There's also a phone number. I'll mention that for you. If you're listening on the radio, the telephone number to call at the Oakland County Health Department for more information, 800-848-5533. 800-848-5533. It's really great, especially you know if you don't have any insurance. It's not going to be any charge. Nobody but nobody but nobody will get turned down if they head off to this. 11.30 today, it's running until then, again, at the Missionary Baptist Church in Pontiac. So we're going to take a quick break here in the splash. When we return, if we get everything working right, I'm sure we will, because Calvin's doing a good job. We're going to check in with Gina Gregory from the West Bloomfield Historical Society. Uh, a lot going on there, and we're going to talk about one of our most famous citizens in West Bloomfield who was just recognized, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. You're watching The Splash Live, and we'll be right back. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. There are many different kinds of noses. Our noses can sniff out all kinds of things. Good things and bad things. Your nose knows if those sniffles are just a cold, allergies, or COVID-19. So swab it, test it, it's good to know. Let's savor these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. When you have a gambling problem, you have a money problem. Don't let your gambling cause you financial hardship. If you or someone you love is struggling with gambling, we can help. Get free confidential counseling and win your life back. Learn more at michigan.gov slash problem gambling. And now back to the splash live. Good morning. Welcome back to the Splash Live. Dave Scott here, and thank you very much for joining us this morning. So a noted West Bloomfield resident, one of really the, the most notable people in media here in our greater metropolitan Detroit area, Chuck Stokes, West Bloomfield resident, great guy, was recognized by the Michigan Historical Society uh, for his work. Now, we're going to check in with someone who knows all about history, and I'm sure is very active in the the Michigan Historical Society from our own Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. Let's say good morning to Gina Gregory. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. You, you like good. You like the new glasses? It's kind yes, of yes, I do. I don't yes, know if it's I a do. little overwhelming or not. I've never really yeah, gone. With it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. Well, thank you for being nice about it. Um, reading from a really great article by Mark Vest in mm -hmm. the Beacon, who I know he talked to you. He he wrote over the course of his decades long career in broadcast journalism, Emmy award winning WXYT Channel Seven editorial public affairs director Chuck Stokes has had the opportunity to answer interview many people who've had an impact on our national and our state history. He's, I mean, Chuck has talked to absolutely everybody. 
we all know that from watching him. Aside from his work for Channel 7, Stokes, who is a resident of our fine community, West Bloomfield, also contributes articles to Michigan History Magazine, and, uh, and they recognized him as the organization's history hero. Uh, Gina, uh, you know, Chuck Stokes, I don't know if you were there when that happened. I was there. And why, I don't can... you tell, why don't you tell us all about it? All right. Uh, so I attended the uh, Michigan in Perspective local history conference that was just held at Sh Suburban Showcase uh, for the first time this year and first time being live in four years. So it was great to uh, be back together again. And uh, it's a, a wonderful conference for two days uh, with keynote speakers at breakfast and lunch and uh, in the afternoon. And on Saturday uh, with that luncheon, uh, Chuck was given an award, uh, the Heroes Award, as I said, uh, for all the work that he's done with that organization, about 22, 20 years of volunteerism, I believe. I think he was president of the board for perhaps six. And then he's always involved with the local history conference. I've attended annually for probably 10, 15 years and uh, uh, enjoy the conference. And so during the keynote on uh, Saturday, they always interview, no, it was Friday, they always interview uh, a political person. They've had uh, Sandra Levin. They've had, uh, yes, a couple days ago was uh, Governor Snyder. So they sit down and have a uh, conversation and Stuck, Chuck leads that. So he does a great job with that. So it was nice to see him uh, recognized by the uh, society and uh, get that award. So That's I wanted great. to lift him up, as they say, <laughs> uh, locally. Uh, you know, because we don't hear much about him here in West Bloomfield, but uh, certainly he's played a part in uh, promoting history. So it was nice to be there. Well, it, it is. And, you know, we like to honor and recognize all of our West Bloomfield residents, and especially when anything good happens, whether it be someone very notable like Chuck Stokes, who we see on TV and have for, for decades here in our area, or, or maybe mm -hmm. it's just your neighbor right down right down the street that does something amazing. So, uh, but we don't want to ignore people like Chuck Stokes, too. So good job. Right. It's really exciting that he won that award. Nice article if you want to uh, learn more about it in the uh, in, in the West Bloomfield Beacon from just a couple of days ago. And that's just happened over the weekend. Um, so you were at this history conference. Let's talk about that um, a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, is, uh, is the high level of interest that we have here in West Bloomfield, thanks in large part to your work and the work of everyone at the Greater West Bloomfield Historical uh, Museum, um, is is that level of interest as high around the rest of the state as it is here in West Bloomfield? Well, that's a tough question, Dave. I don't know if I can answer it. I can I can tell you, uh, Chuck had learned about Apple Island, and there was interest in that. So one of our members, Katie uh, Catherine Kangany, uh, director of the Jewish Historical Society of Michigan, also a uh, local resident, uh, gave a presentation on Apple Island, the myths about Chief Pontiac. So uh, folks were interested to hear that. So we participated in the, uh, you know, in the uh, conference. So this conference has about, uh, well, years ago it had 250 people attend. Now, before COVID, I think they were almost to 700. Uh, they said last, a uh, couple days ago, that it was more like 550. Uh, upwards of that uh, for the you know for this conference so you know it's always a process um, so yeah you know people come together with uh, to spend you know a, a, a long time looking at history and uh, chatting with each other which is really nice well I'll tell you what I'll try and answer my own question then um, and okay. and expand on that I think I think people love history in the state of Michigan there is so much um, um, historical tourism that goes on here in the state. You think about, you know, some of our greatest destinations like Mackinac Island and and even sure. just, you know, up in that area, even more recent history, because I know I'm getting old. So like history is something that happened in my lifetime now too. And I, I you know, one of the things that I, the 
that I've always thought is the most fascinating is um, is the the history of the Mackinac Bridge and and its construction and and um, certainly the way that they got people across the Straits of Mackinac before. So there's history everywhere you go, and maybe just as another measure of how excited people are in history here in our area was evident just at the West Bloomfield Public Library event that we had uh, not long ago when you were able to get a, a, a notable local person from our community who has engaged in a big piece of history around Pine Lake to come make a presentation. And and we we couldn't get everybody in the room at the West Bloomfield Library Sunday right. ago. Right, right. Uh, yes, that was pretty fantastic to have uh, Paul Wilbur be willing to uh, share his history. And I'm I'm glad that he did. It's certainly been a labor of love for him. You know, he's, he talked about that he's had, uh, so he lives at uh, 2690 Pine Lake Road, which is the wonderful home with the blue cedar roof that's so iconic. Um, probably my favorite house around. Uh, but in his presentation, he talked about all the work that needed to be done to it and how he had a list of 45 contractors um, you know, I can't even think of 45 trades off the top of my head that would be needed, but, uh, you know, he, he's done it all. So uh, for him to share that with us is uh, certainly interesting. And so I'm looking forward to uh, Civic Center TV being able to uh, share that with us remotely uh, soon. That, that That's a real treasure. You so know, it was history a history lives forever. So. Yeah. Absolutely. It was it was a great presentation. He talks about the home. He talks about the renovation of this amazing home. But Gina, he also, Paul Wilbur also talked about the transition of our community from, you know, a Native American community to, uh, you know, a resort community uh, to a lakeside community and told that story so well. So um, we do have it all captured. We're putting the final finishing touches on that video. And, and we'll begin playing that next week. And I, I urge you to tune in to Civic Center TV. We'll, we'll get Paul on again. He's uh, a very kind gentleman and gave us a lot of time and was nice to do that presentation and answer mm -hmm. everybody's questions. But uh, Gina, I, 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 I can't remember someone so enthusiastic and invested in in the restoration of a home and and i think you know paul realized that that home isn't just his that you you mentioned it and uh, i mean that that's a landmark here in our community and if you haven't driven by you should check it out maybe tune in the next week we get this um fine piece of history up but uh but go go check it out um that was just a great presentation and i can't urge people enough to, uh, to tune in. There's also gonna be another opportunity to get involved with you and your organization as you have an open house coming up. You wanna tell us about it? I sure do. It's gonna be soon, uh, April 2nd. We're calling it the 1913 and 1953 Tax Record Books Open House uh, okay. so that people can look through those tax records. Um, to learn no more about your property, you need to know the township section number the proper dis description and perhaps a subdivision that it's in, so that you can look up, uh, you can look at each of those books, uh, which is just such a process and interesting in itself. Uh, and then if you find your property, you can see what the taxes were. And the, the interesting part about that is that you can then com compare the two years uh, of what they were and, uh, and by, by knowing that number, you can probably tell whether there was a home on it or not. So that's probably one of the best ways people can learn when their home was made if they don't have it on their deed uh, currently. So it's a nice well, resource. Yeah, well, that sounds like a lot of fun coming to get information and, uh, you know, uh, just be ready. I would have some oxygen available there because when people see what they're paying now in their taxes and what they used to pay in their taxes, you, yeah. you may need to resuscitate a couple, <laughs> a couple sure. of people. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, life's changed a lot from <laughs> yeah. it. It really has, but that's fun. And it's a, could you, I mean, would you be able to find out additional information from looking at those records, maybe previous Ooh. owners and everything, or is it just simply the tax information that people will be able to see? They would have the, per, the person's name 
probably their address, but I'm not, you know, it's been a while since I cracked them open. Uh, it, it's, it is what it is. It, it's going to have information going across about that moment in time. So that's. Uh, All right. Well, Gina, thank, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good to, good to chat with you. Thanks for everything you do. Um, I was just so impressed how many people showed up for the Paul uh, Wilbur event at the public library. It was jammed. We had to go get more chairs and people yeah. were standing up all around the room. So I want to urge people to watch that. It hits the air next week right here at Civic Center TV. And uh, we'll try and chase down Chuck Stokes and maybe uh, get a little more insight about his enthusiasm for history um, and get him on the program. So thanks for Great. making that connection as well today. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Very good. Gina Gregory from the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society joining us this morning on Civic Center TV. We're going to take a break on the Splash Live and we'll be right back with more. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. When the temperatures are chilly, being together warms the soul. <laughs> Keep the winter fun going. Help protect yourself and those around you by keeping your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Many people are feeling overwhelmed and struggling with mental wellness these days. So be kind to your mind. Give yourself permission to breathe. Share your feelings. You are not alone. Have hope. Talk to a Stay Well counselor for free confidential help 24-7 through the COVID-19 hotline. I'm Steve Eisenman of the Detroit Red Wings, and I think every child in Michigan deserves a safe, healthy, and happy childhood. Can we build a state where children trust Michigan isn't just a name, but something our kids believe? Please support Children Trust Michigan as the voice for children and families by visiting the website to learn more. And now, back to the Splash, live! Well, good morning. Thank you very much for tuning in. Splash Live, Dave Scott, right here on Civic Center TV. Todd O'Keefe will be in at 10 o'clock with the Megacast. We want you to stay tuned for that. A uh, quick nod out to uh, our good friend Scott Bernstein at the Oakland Press. Did a really nice job um, with an interview with Zach Hilbers, a West Bloomfield High School football coach, who we will catch up next week after spring break is over and talk more about his transition into the head coaching role at one of the premier football programs in the state of Michigan right here in West Bloomfield. But again, if you want to get a little uh, head start on that and find out a little bit more about uh, one of the fine coaches in our athletic program and now the new head coach of the West Bloomfield High School football team, check out the current article in the Oakland Press. Congratulations to the West Millville High School band students, eight of them who earned a Division I superior rating at the State Solo and Ensemble Festival. Post up on uh, Facebook today. There they are, uh, pictures of uh, some of the students who won. It's so nice, and there's so many of these. I can't get to all of them, but every time I, I was in band myself, so I always enjoy uh, getting the pictures of these uh, folks on TV and uh, highlighting the great effort of not only of our sports programs, but all of our extracurricular activities in West Bloomfield, and a big nod to the West Bloomfield band. So also big nod to another good organization, not only good, but great organization here in West Bloomfield. And that is West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Department. And, and as part of a new initiative here at Civic Center TV, um, we are doing all we can to encourage uh, individuals like you and organizations to send us video that you have put together. So I thought if we've got it all queued up here, we would take a look 
at the uh, the promotional video for the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Department. It's really good. It's not very long. So let's see if we can roll that right now and take a look. West Bloomfield Parks was established in 1970 and manages 12 parks and facilities and more than 580 acres of public parkland. We are proud to serve the West Bloomfield community by offering hundreds of recreational opportunities annually through an award-winning park system. One of the best parts about living in West Bloomfield lies in its natural beauty and resources. It's home to 28 lakes, more than 150 ponds and wetlands, as well as our 162-acre nature preserve. West Bloomfield Park celebrates the community's natural resources by helping residents discover their own love for the great outdoors. Whether it's a naturalist guided hike, exploration in our outdoor natural play area, or learning about Michigan native animals, we strive to ignite a passion for the outdoors and protecting the natural environment in every individual we meet. A sense of community enhances the quality of life for its residents. West Bloomfield Park strives to provide spaces and programs to foster and nurture this concept. Whether it's designing a program to meet the needs of our senior community or making public spaces available for large group gatherings, we look to facilitate social opportunities whenever possible. Life is made valuable by the experiences we share, not the things we collect. West Bloomfield Parks creates opportunities for families to reconnect, create family traditions, and make memories to last a lifetime. We offer unique events year-round for free or at a low cost, so everyone in the community can enjoy the experiences alike. Discover your next adventure by visiting wbparks.org. job year round. If you've not been to their website, I encourage you to go there. You can Google West Bloomfield Parks and find it very easily. Uh, also be sure to get their guides with all of their various programs. Uh, so many things going on um, there in our community. And as uh, springtime comes, everything will be opening back up. And, and uh, I know we enjoy our parks year round, but even more greater opportunity to get out, play softball, you know, go to the go to the lake shores, go to our parks and recreation areas, our trails, and get out and enjoy them. And uh, again, uh, saluting this morning the people at West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation doing a great job. And they have all kinds of events that are, are that are informative and fun. And with April Fool's Day right around the corner, uh, if you go to their website, you're going to find out that they put together a really interesting program. Uh, West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation say, saying today. People aren't the only ones playing pranks on April Fools. Uh, they have set up a program April 1st from 2 to 3.30 at the West Bloomfield Recreational Activity Center. And there you and your kids, if they you take them along, um, but you'll enjoy this yourself, uh, will learn how animals use a variety of tricks, also known as adaptations, to survive and thrive in the wild. You'll meet an animal ambassador and then you'll take a hike on the trail by the rec center and it uh, should be a lot of fun. Small fee for residents, a little bit more for non-residents. More information about Animal April Fools on the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation website. And uh, before we go, one thing I wanted to show you, I shot this video over the weekend and I know it's not West Bloomfield, but we do live in a greater uh, metropolitan Detroit community. And one of the really huge projects going on is that one. That is the construction site of the new Gordy Howe Bridge that extends from Detroit and I should say will extend from Detroit and across a river. And Calvin, feel free to let this loop because it's really, you, you, watching this twice or three times is, is okay. Um, you can see that they've um, begun to build the uh, the ramp up to the river's edge. This is a really amazing bridge. It is a suspension bridge with these two huge towers and it, it, there, there's so much work and so much development going on in the area where the bridge is. The bridge is just a little bit downriver from the current Ambassador Bridge. But you can see that's the tower. If you look close, you can see the beginning of some of the suspension cables that will hold the bridge deck. And if you look off in the distance past that silo, there is the tower that is over on the Canadian side. they got the two huge towers. There's cranes everywhere, ton of construction going on, and it's really 
really going to be exciting when we have this new bridge to help us span um, Metro Detroit and Canada. So, hey, I think that's all the time we have today. Thank you very much for joining us here in the Splash. I'm going to be out for a couple days. Tyler Keith will be filling in, and uh, we'll see you back here Monday right here on the Splash Live.